All right, folks, let's go in here and get us a new pair of work boots. Okay, so this is our, our local rigging shop. You can see here, we'll just you can get anything you ever needed for working in the woods or, or construction or whatever. All your signs, safety belts. We got climbing spurs here. I'll have a pair of those on shortly. Oh, they even got... They even got stuff for the sweet little babies. Let's go over here for a second. Just give you guys an overview. Those, that right there, those are those backpack water cans I was telling you about that we carry during fire season to uh, help put the fires out. And then here's all our quick nubs and stuff, all kinds of, this is a great place. Little line cutter there. So, uh, lots and lots and lots of boots. Uh, like I was saying, though, the the West Coast boots, in my opinion, are the best boots ever made. That's all I ever wore. It's for rose logging. Okay. Danner insulated corks. Oh, I got a lot of weight to lose. <laughs> oh boy, they feel good though. This, uh, normally, I would be buying the West Coast leather boots. Uh, that's all I ever wore. Best boot I ever had. But. <clears throat> since it's been so long and we're not 100% sure that uh, my knees are going to handle it I'm not going to spend $447 on a pair of boots until I know that it's going to work out no we don't I just want to show you since we're here this is the west coast timber light boots like I say, that's all I've ever worn. Uh, once we know for sure that uh, this is going to work out, then that's what I'll get. Them are the best boots ever made right there. And then these are called Alaskan slippers to me. Uh, they're really actually pretty cool. Uh, good for chasing and whatnot around here. Those aren't any good. Don't buy boots like that. Vikings. That is a tough pair of rubber boots right there. Very, very tough. And also, I wanted to say if you're buying a pair of boots for your first time, whether they're corked or not, do not go with a 14 or a 16 inch top boot because they will make you very clumsy. You got to uh, get used to the boots first and wearing them and whatnot, and then go to a bigger, taller top. Okay, so we got the new boots here, sitting in front of the fire, getting nice and hot. You can see I got a pretty good shine on them. Put some waterproofing, Hubbard shoe grease. Hi, Tasha. Say hi to everybody. Don't lick that, baby. That's nasty. Don't lick it. Tasha, no. Anyways, I'm putting the Hubbard's boot grease on them. Uh, set them here by the fire and get them nice and hot so that stuff will suck right in. Uh, now, normally, if I would have bought the... the uh, Oh, there's a White Ox gloves. Those are the best rigging gloves ever. Uh, anyways, if I would have bought the, the West Coast boots, uh, I would not no matter what time of the year it is I would not put grease or anything on them before I broke them in I would uh, fill them full of water and stick them on the back porch and let them soak all night in the water and then for a couple of three days I would continue to do that until they formed into my feet and then I would grease them up dry them out and grease them up uh, but with these boots, there's not a, a much of a, a break-in period on them. They're pretty soft type leather insulated boots, so there's not a whole lot of break-in on them. 
like I say, with the West Coast, the all leather, and that's just the way I do it. Again, that's I'm not telling everybody that's the way you should do it, but it seemed like they would they would break in a lot quicker and easier if I got them soaked full of water and warm for a couple of days.